welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new here please hit the subscribe button if you are a returning subscriber welcome back to the family baby excuse me for using my hand care but anyway today in today's video i'll be doing like a cultural shock video but not more like a cultural shock video but it's like more of an experience of how i how i was in nigeria how everything turned out how my first experience in nigeria was how the people were how all those type of things the food the traffic everything literally everything so, so without wasting any time let me just get into the video so the first thing first you need to have a passport in order for you to travel anywhere literally if you want to travel out of the country you need to have a passport so the first thing you will need you need to have a visa in order for you to have a visa you need to apply for it obviously so the application probably cost around like three thousand but then i when i did mine i asked someone to do my application so i had to pay, pay like extra fee for the for the person to do my my own application so basically the price for the visa is probably like three thousand yeah max three thousand max that's the price of the visa and another thing you need to book your tickets so i booked my ticket with um apc airline i use apc airline to travel to nigeria APS airline is an airline that's from Nigeria. It's basically a Nigerian airline. So I used APS in order for me to travel. One thing I like about APS is that you, it takes you from Joburg and then straight to Lagos. There's no stopover, no nothing. So as for me, as I come, as for me, I come from Cape Town. So from Cape Town, I had to take a flight to Joburg, and I booked that like separately because I don't wanna confuse everything like you know. And I had no other choice. Let me not say not confused or anything. I had no other choice, so I had to book separately. I booked a um, lift, South African airline lift to go to Joburg and then from Joburg I took APs. So my flight was at 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 11.30 at night. So yeah, so I took a flight in Cape Town around, um, I think it was around, around 8, no around 7 and then I arrived in Joburg around 9. So a flight takes you from Cape Town to Joburg for two hours and then you get to Joburg and when I, as soon as I got to Joburg, I checked in and after checking in, as soon as I was done with that, I went to go eat. I went to go buy chicken bacon and then I was just waiting for my time to arrive so that I can go and board and all those things. But yeah, so I traveled safely and everything. So the first thing I noticed, the first thing I noticed when I was boarding and everything, if the staff the staff from Airpiece, they were so, 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 so nice. Literally, they were so nice, they were so kind. I checked in proper, I bought it in proper, everything was so smooth. Like, another thing, when you are traveling like, out of the country, these people will check your passport, they will check your visa, they will check everything. And another thing I forgot, when you are doing your passport, you all, when you are doing your visa, sorry, you have to pay for a COVID-19 test that you'll be doing in Nigeria. Yes, you will do a COVID-19 a COVID test in South Africa so that you can travel from Joburg to get to Nigeria. When you get to Nigeria, they will require you to do another COVID test. You get me? To do another COVID test. So you have to pay, to, you have to pay for that COVID test in advance. You can't travel without paying that COVID-19 test you can't travel without paying for that. Even if you're not going to do it when you get to Nigeria, but you still have to pay for that COVID-19 test. I kind of feel like it's a way of them trying to take away money from us or whatever. I literally do not know. Because now when I got there, I did not go do that COVID-19 test because it's like, it's so useless to me. Literally, it was so useless because when you get to Nigeria, you do everything correctly. And then you just have to show them that proof that, listen, I have paid for the COVID-19 test. And then you go, it's up to you if, okay, you're going to go to that place to go do your COVID-19 test or not. And I find it so ridiculous because you did your COVID-19 test like 24 hours ago or 20 or 48 hours ago, but they still require you to do another COVID test. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. But then it's Nigeria is not the only country that does that. Um, in Ghana, no, I think Nigeria is the only country that does that. Because when I traveled to Ghana, I only did one COVID test, in which it was no in Nigeria in Ghana as well. But in Ghana, when you get there, as soon as you get there, they do you the test. In which in Nigeria, they don't do you that test. You have to go back again and go do that COVID test. I don't know who has time to do that, but it's not me. So yeah. 
that's what I noticed. I noticed as soon as I got there, I noticed that it was so, 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 so fucking hot. Sorry, I'm my language, but it was so, it was like flipping hot. Uh, I couldn't even breathe. I was wearing a jacket because in Joburg it was kind of cold, and also when you're inside the plane, it's, it kind of does feel a bit cold. So I was wearing my jacket, my puffer jacket, and I was like, there's no way that I'm wearing this in this heat. Let me remove it. I removed it, and then, yeah, it was so, so hot, like, so, 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 so hot, literally. If you stay in Cape Town, like, 20, 25 degrees is hot in Cape Town. So imagine the 30 or 32 degrees in Nigeria, that's extreme. And another thing, when you are traveling to Nigeria, you literally have to have money. You need to have money. I feel like, even if you're not traveling to Nigeria, but you're traveling to other countries, you need to have extra money. Like, just cash in your pocket, dollars in your pocket, Naira in your pocket, Ghanaian cities in your pocket, rands in your pocket, anything. You literally have to have money. Because these people, when you get to the airport, you'll find those cleaners even in Joburg, literally even in Joburg when I travelled from, when I travelled to Joburg this other time and then I was in the bathroom and then the lady was like um, can you please help give me money for bread, like all those type of things I was like, I don't have, and I literally did not have I did not have any cash on me so if you're travelling to Nigeria or any other country, can you please have cash it's not a must but do have cash, and also in Nigeria um you have to bribe for even like the smallest thing for you for you maybe to just pass the line you have to bribe for you to you have to bribe they'll be like you don't have any small small thing for the brothers or you don't have any uh, literally i'm not even joking so you need to have like j like money like your coin so that when you pass them they will definitely ask you money and then you should give them but now I did not have any money. Even when I traveled to Ghana, I was like, mm, "There's no way I'm not. Um, there's no way I'm giving someone money because why? Because you are working here and you're getting paid. So you need to bribe. Even if your documents are correctly, they will want you to bribe. Like you don't have any small small money for the brother. You don't have any those type of things. So yeah, it's it's absolutely up to you. But then if you don't want any problems or those type of things, you just bribe them. Just like take because. I don't want Wahala, so yeah. And also, when I got there, someone offered to help me to um, carry my bag because when I arrived in Nigeria, I arrived in Nigeria around half past six, yeah, around six in the morning. And then the other guy from APs helped me carry my bag, right? But let me tell you the story, listen. So when I arrived in Nigeria, right, we went through passport control. And then after that, I went to that visa application because my visa was visa on arrival. So I had to go get my visa before I can leave. So now, in that visa application process, it was taking too long. It probably took like an hour. You understand? It's not even full, but it took like an hour for them to process and all those type of things. And then after that, when I was leaving, after finishing with the visa process, when I was leaving, my bag was literally the only one that was left there. I feel like there was my bag and a few bags that were left there. So what happened is, when I went to go collect my bag, right? I collected my bag and then this guy came up to me be like, Hi, um, can I please carry your bag for you? I was like, okay, cool. You want to carry my bag? Carry my bag. I don't mind. Cool. The guy took my bag and then we went. Through. And then when we were about to turn, like to go out, because everything is just cleared now, passport control, visa application, everything is cleared. I need to go home and I'm very, very tired. So when we passed there and this guy was like to me, um, you need to um, pay me, not like pay me. He didn't, he didn't say like pay me, but then like, you need to give me just something small so that I can, you know, because once you get there, they will search your bag and will want to open your bag, whatever. And I was like, I don't mind because I don't have anything illegal in my bag. They can search my bag. And then, like, I was like, no, you need to um, maybe, like, give me something small because they want to search your bag and ask you what you have in there, and, 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 and I can go pass through this, wada, wada, wada. I was like, no way. What are you saying? I don't understand. Like, I acted so confused, like, so confused. I'm like, what's going on? It's not like I didn't know that, okay, you have to bribe and all those things. I knew, but then I was like, no, I want to see for myself what will happen. Cool. And then the the guy was like, okay, do it, it's fine, wada, wada, wada. Cool. And then a guy from APs, that's what I was saying, those people are so kind, they're so nice. A guy that works for APs, that works at the airport, came up to me, be like, hey, hello. Because I feel like the guy kind of knew that I wasn't from the country. I was like, hey, hello, 
what is he saying to you what, what, and then the guy left that's why i knew like mm -mm, this type of thing they're doing is kind of illegal or something and then sorry and then after that the guy um helped me out i went out and then they checked my bag not like check my bag open my bag the only the, 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 the people that were standing there just asked me what's inside your bag and i told him no my what you call this thing my clothes are inside my bag and my shoes and that's all they were like what do you do for a living why are you here and i was like no i'm here for business and yeah so they were like okay so when you want to take clothes oh what do you do in your business that person said what do you do in your business and i said no i sell clothes i am a business owner i own my own business and also my visa is a business visa right so let me know i sell clothes and i own my own business and like okay cool so when you want to take clothes here and send it back to your country i was like no i'm not here for that i'm just here to see my vendor like the person that i'll be buying from and seeing the materials and all those type of things and then the guy was like oh okay cool and then they're like you don't have anything for the like no i do not have and i do not have i do not have and then i left like that and the guy kind of assisted me to get my uber not uber my boyfriend and uh, to get the car and all those type of things the guy was super nice and then when we got him we just gave him something small you need to give something small for the boys uh. you need to give something small for the boys uh. so yeah we gave him something because i felt like he kind of deserved it because he kind of helped me and he was so kind so we gave him something small and then i left but on my way, like I see these kids, like these kids on the streets, I'm like, what's going on here? Like, what's happening? What's happening? Why are the kids, these kids on the road? It's not like it's something that I can't, I don't experience in South Africa or in Cape Town. Like you do find those kids that are at the robots, begging for money, begging for money for bread. But in Nigeria, they are literally a lot. They are a lot, 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 lot. So I was like, oh, these kids. And it was so sad to me because I kind of fell for them because there were too many. And then it made me think, oh, what, what's going on? Like, is this country poor? Like, what's going on? Why are there so many children in the streets? Like, why aren't they in school or something, you know? Kind of made me feel somehow. And another thing, uh, it was raining when I arrived and there were people that were selling while it was raining. Like, they were on the streets while it was raining. And I felt so sad. I was like, what's going on? Like, oh my God. Like, my heart was so, so, so painful. But, yeah. But then they told me, like, no, it's something that's normal care. Um, you will see this a lot. You're not even going to feel. Anyhow, when you see them again, when you see more, like, often, you don't feel anything for them. Because these, these, these children, they kind of scratch your car if you don't give them money. So that's another bad thing about them. They'll scratch your car if you don't give them money. So yeah, that's another thing. And guys, let me not forget traffic. Another thing, traffic. Third point, traffic. Traffic in Nigeria is crazy. Whether morning, afternoon, late traffic. The only time you can go out to Nigeria is around six. Even six, around eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. traffic. Literally everywhere you go, traffic. Besides, if you stay in Victoria Island and literally Banana Island, then there's no traffic. There isn't much traffic outside. But traffic in Lagos, coming from the airport to get to our house, traffic, it was so crazy. Literally, it was so crazy. That's another thing you'll experience. Traffic, the kids on the streets, they'll probably make you feel somehow. They made me feel somehow. But then they're kind of annoying because when I, cause I stayed there for like three months, they were kind of annoying by now because they bang your car. They want to wash your windows. I will. That's another thing. All right, so another thing, when you get to Nigeria, just know that, listen, when you, you're going to eat spicy food. Regardless of anything, where you come from, you come from China, you're gonna eat spicy food. Literally, you're gonna eat spicy food. So if you if you are a South African and you're like, no, I don't eat spicy food, I won't eat spicy food, you will eat spicy food. So I suggest if you do not like spicy food, don't go to Nigeria because everything you will eat is spicy. Everything is spicy. Some moisture spicy, rice spicy. 
Your ginga is literally spicy. So if you don't like spicy food, that's not the country that you should go to. But yeah. But at least maybe you go to a restaurant, like maybe you would find something that's not spicy. But like everything, the menu is full of spicy food. Even if you order pasta, there will be a bit of spice. But yeah, everything is so spicy. And also before I forget, um, my visa, the visa that I applied for was a business visa. And also my visa was valid for a month and I extended the visa for two months, two more months. Actually, I think the visa is still valid now, again, because I did an extension. So in order for you to do an extension, you have to pay, which is, you have to pay, I think, 196 Naira. I'm not really quite, yeah, I'm not really quite sure. I'm not really quite sure. But yeah, I think it's, I think we paid 196 or 100 and something Naira. Yeah. So if you want to extend, then you can gladly do that extend your business visa that's basically that so if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button i would really 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 appreciate that and i'm literally on my way to 500 followers so thank you so much guys i appreciate your love and support um i'd like for you to keep on and keep on supporting me and obviously i'll keep on delivering real content yes so thank you so much Bye.